The National Broadcasting Company presents The Big Show, starring the glamorous, unpredictable Tallulah Bankhead. For the next hour and 30 minutes, you will be entertained by some of the biggest names in show business. Such bright stars as... Fred Allen. Fred Allen. The Andrews Sisters. Marlena Dietrich. Bill Foster. Betty Goodman. Portland Hoffa. Frankie Lane. Margaret Truman. Meredith Wilson. And my name, darling, is Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> Well, darlings, what a company of entertainers on the big show this week. What glamour, what stars, what hams, <laughs> and what cabbage they cost. And what a time it was to get them all on one show. I had to call them all personally. There's one star we have with us who's just about the most divine, glamorous, exciting woman in show business. Always seen at the smartest night spots in town, well, I was lucky to trace her down by phone. Hello. Hello, Marlena. <laughs> uh, this is Tallulah. I can't talk to you now, Tallulah. You call me at the most awkward times. Call me back later. I'll be at this number all night. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> Well, maybe I shouldn't bother calling you back, darling. Oh, no, no. Call me here. I'm at my daughter's house. She went out with her husband for the evening, and I'm babysitting with my grandchildren. I have to go now. I have to make a change. Oh. <laughs> and that's the most divine, glamorous, exciting woman in show business. Always mixed up in her triangles. <laughs> And I had to promise to exchange guest appearances, too. I have to sit with her grandchildren tomorrow night. And then I even had trouble getting Fred Allen and Portland Hoffer. Portland answered the phone. Hello? Hello, Portland. This is Tallulah. I want to talk to you about you and Fred coming on the big show. Well, I can't talk now. I'm in the middle of getting dinner. I just put the ham in the oven. And don't think it isn't hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, <laughs> I had to call Phil Foster, the brilliant young monologist from Brooklyn. Oops, Brooklyn. Hello, Louis Candy Sower. Yeah? Let me talk to Phil Foster. Uh, just a minute, mister. Hey, <laughs> Phil Fellman. Hey, Phil Fellman, you're wanted on the phone, under your other name. Hello. Hello, Phil. How about coming on the big show Sunday, huh? Oh, I'd be glad to. How about the money? Well, uh, what about $50? Okay, I'll do it. How should I bring you the money? Cash or check? <laughs> well, the Andrews sisters were the most difficult. I had to call three times before I found them all in. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. Are the Andrews sisters there? Who is this speaking? Uh, this is Tallulah. Sorry, the Andrews sisters aren't here. Who is this? The Marx Brothers. <laughs> and then I call that great clarinetist, the king himself, Mr. Goodman. Hello. Hello. Is that you, George Goodman? No, this is Benny. Please. People are eating. <laughs> we don't mention that name on this program. Oh. One of our stars, I had to call long distance. Hello. Hello. Is Margaret there? Just a minute. For you, Margaret. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Don't try up the phone too long. I might get an important call. <laughs> and that's how I got this motley crew together for the show. Then I called the people who sponsor the first half hour of the big show, the darling Reynolds Metals Company, and here's what they said to me. This week, Miss Bankhead, we'd like to invite our listeners to visit Hometown, USA. Come in by plane, it's aluminum all over. Arrive by streamlined train, much of it aluminum. Come by bus, gleaming with aluminum. Drive your own car, 
you'd be surprised how much Reynolds aluminum does now to make it safer, more efficient. How much more aluminum engineers want for the car of tomorrow. Now here's a hometown home. Its windows and rain gutters are Reynolds aluminum. Reynolds reflective insulation keeps it cooled in summer, warm in winter. And the electric power that brings in this program may well come through Reynolds aluminum cable. Look at your own hometown. And remember, this amazing rise of aluminum only began when Reynolds brought competition into the industry. Reynolds, one of the nation's great producers of aluminum. Well, darlings, I'm so glad we have on our show this week one of my favorite people who came up from Washington, D.C. to be with us for a fourth term. I mean, a fourth time. <laughs> now, come over here, Margaret Truman, sweetie pie. Well, Margaret, darling, I'm so glad you're here because all the while we were in London, I kept thinking of you. You were there a few weeks before we were, and I'm dying to compare notes with you. Did you have a good time in England, darling? Oh, yes. Oh, I what a time wonderful... I had of there, Margaret, my dear. I stopped, I mean, at the Ritz Hotel. What service? And what meals? Every course served in a different class. <laughs> uh, where did you stay over there, Margaret? Well, I was at... For... Oh, I wish you'd been at the Ritz, darling. This is murder. Well, it's too bad you weren't there when I was there. I mean, I have so many friends in London, you know, darling. I mean, I really have so many friends. They could have shown you such a wonderful time. Do you have any friends in London? Well, I oh, do know that. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> and I had my hair done for this show. I should have had my head examined. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Did I interrupt something you were going to say? Oh, that's all right, Tallulah. I'm used to filibusters. <laughs> Well, you haven't told me, Margaret. Did you enjoy London? I mean, did you do any concerts over there? Did you work? No, it was just a kind of vacation. Oh, I see. Uh, sort of a goodwill tour. Did you go over on a goodwill tour, Tallulah, or did you sing? Take it easy. <laughs> Women have the privilege to vote now, you know. In our house, it's not a privilege. It's an ultimatum. Oh, a sort of a command performance. Well, tell me, Margaret... How do you make the trip to England? By plane or boat? I went by boat. Oh, I took a plane. But the last time I was in England, which was some years ago, of course, I came home from England by boat. I don't remember the name of the boat. Now, what was it now? Uh, the Queen Mary? Uh, no, darling, it was not. The America? No, 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 no. The Eel de No, 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 it wasn't that. Tallulah, I can't resist this. Was it the Mayflower? <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, darling. Uh, when was the last time you were on this show, Margaret? Oh, about five months ago. No, darling, this is the last time. <laughs> promises, promises, always promises. Margaret, how's the remodeling uh, coming along on your house? Have they painted it yet? I mean, is the house still going to be white? <laughs> oh, yes, but it's the same old story. When you start repairing an old house, you run into more expense. It would have been easier to build a new house. Why didn't you, darling? Well, it's hard to find property in that neighborhood. It's all owned by the government. <laughs> well, I suppose your landlord is raising your rent 15% for the remodeling, huh? No, I think it was supposed to be 11 and 3 quarter percent. <laughs> well, I guess there's a lot of bother remodeling a home. I remember when my apartment was being remodeled, I had to take a room in a hotel. As a matter of fact, it was the Taft Hotel. The what hotel, Tallulah? The Taft. What hotel? Oh, I see what you mean, darling. I mean the Barclay Hotel. <laughs> well, Margaret, how about a song for us, sweetie? I heard you in the orchestra rehearsing something this morning. Oh, yes. Meredith Wilson's orchestra is simply wonderful. I'm insane about them. Simply daft. Simply what, darling? Oh, I'm sorry. Simply Barclay. <laughs> well, that's better. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Margaret Truman, accompanied by the big show orchestra, singing the waltz from Coppelia, Mary's Darling, if you please. <laughs> Hey. 
legend of song. Neath the trees of our grass, tell me where does he pass? Tell me where does he pass? Tell me where, tell me where does he pass? Through the wheat and the corn, past the hedge and the thorn, neath the trees of our grass. Ah, 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 tell me where, tell me where does he pass? divine, darling. Uh, come here now, Margaret. I want you to meet some guests on our show this week. Do you know the Andrews sisters? Hello, Margaret. Hello. Now, let me see if I can get them all straight this time. This one is Laverne Andrews. Hello, Laverne. No, I'm Maxine. Oh, well, darling, I'm sorry. I mean, this is Maxine Laverne. No, it's Maxine Andrews. I mean Maxine Andrews. I'm Laverne. Oh, yes, this one is Laverne Maxine. Laverne Andrews. Well, didn't I say Laverne Andrews? No, you said Laverne Maxine. Well, anyhow, this third one's Groucho. <laughs> no, 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 I'm Patty. Well, anyway, these are the Andrew brothers. <laughs> now, you mean the Ritz sisters. Well, anyway, I'm glad to know you fellows. Yeah. <laughs> Girls, I'm terribly sorry that I always get you three mixed up. I just don't seem to be able to remember which is which. Well, a lot, lot of people have that trouble, Tallulah. Yes, and we have a little system worked out that makes it easy to remember our names. Let me show her the system. You see, Tallulah, the one on the left is always Laverne. All you have to remember is L.A. The one on the right is Maxine, so all you have to remember is M.A. And the one in the middle is me, Patty. P.A. You see? L-A-M-A-P-A. Oh, that's very easy. Thank you, darling. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the Limapa sisters will sing their latest recording. No, no, no. Let me give you the surefire system. What's Lou. that? Well, maybe you can remember us this way. I'm Patty, the tallest, five foot seven. I'm Laverne, the next tallest, five foot six. And I'm Maxine, five foot five. But who can remember all these figures, darling? That was cut in the script. I'm sorry, kids. Press on. Oh, well, there is one way. If you look at our blouses, you'll see our names are embroidered on them. Well, that's the cowardly way, of course. <laughs> and now, girls, how about a song? Well, well that's, that's what, what we're, we're here, here for. Okay. I heard you rehearsing something with Meredith Wilson in the orchestra this morning. That's right. Well, I hope that's not the song you're going to sing. <laughs> no. What is the song you're going to do? Melguenia. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen... The Embroidery Sisters. <laughs> and now singing Malaguena. M.A., Maxine, L.A., Laverne, and Duena. That's the one in the middle. Meredith, darling, if you please. <laughs> Fly away, said my carefree heart To the place where the daydreams start To the land where it's always spring And the moon is a dancing thing Fly away, said my heart to me To the shore of a moonlit sea 
where the grapes on the vines above fill the air with the wine of love. My Melaguena, your eyes shine in the sky. You were as fair as I dreamed you would be. I loved and lost you, for I never could deny the gypsy strain in me. Cold to be fancy free when I see a rattle that's a rope for me. My melancholy, I went my inconstant way, knowing so well. Fate stands beside me, it calls, and I must obey. But it's no matter by what path I may depart, I can escape from my heart. Gypsies that for me, Malaguena, you be much the same as me. music you can get out of three girls, yet our sponsor can get a thousand and one miracles out of one product. Yes, one product. Amazing Reynolds Wrap, the original and genuine, the pure aluminum foil of a thousand and one kitchen miracles. Made by the Reynolds Metals Company, especially for home use, for keeping foods fresh, for cooking, for baking, carefully packaged, uniform in purity and quality. Use it to cover bowls and wrap leftovers. Line your broiler pan with Reynolds Wrap so it needs no scouring. And now, with the holidays coming, plan for the big thrill. The finest turkey you ever tasted, roasted in Reynolds Wrap. Because this aluminum foil keeps all the juices in, you get more flavor and more meat, with no basting or oven watching. There's nothing like Reynolds Wrap to save food, save time, save work. You know, of course, that with today's vast military needs for aluminum, the supply of Reynolds Wrap is limited. But there will be more as Reynolds expands its aluminum capacity. So look for Reynolds Wrap in the bright coral package. It will bring your kitchen up to date in this age of aluminum. Reynolds Aluminum. <laughs> A few weeks ago, a review opened on Broadway called Borch Capades, whatever that means. <laughs> Out of that show, a young man came, a young man who received much critical acclaim. Well, this wasn't used to us here, because he's no stranger to the big show. May I present at this time the brilliant young monologist, I pronounced that correctly, didn't I? Mr. Phil Foster. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Phil, glad to see you, darling. Glad to see you, Tallulah. Oh, I want you to meet somebody. Margaret Truman, may I present Phil Foster? How do you do, Mr. Foster? Uh, how do you do? I'm one of your constituents. Really? <laughs> From which state? Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn? Thirteen and a half games. What happened? <laughs> 
What happened? How do I know what happened? It's nothing personal, but somebody must have passed a law to Brooklyn Shum win the pennant. You know, before the season started, they took a poll of all the sports writers, and the poll showed that Brooklyn was going to win in a breeze. I know. Polls can sometimes be wrong. You're not kidding. <laughs> well. Well, <laughs> personally, I was pretty happy about the Johns. Give it a big hand, baby. <laughs> Please, don't mention that word in the program. If you ever come to Brooklyn, I can prove to you that we was robbed. I wouldn't even know how to get to Brooklyn. I'll explain to you how. Never mind, never mind. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Oh, tell me, Phil, how does a real Brooklynite feel about that disastrous last game the Dodgers have for Jazz? Oh, my <laughs> Feel? Who can feel? I'm numb. I'll tell you how bad I felt. I took my girl to the movies and we sat in the orchestra. You know, I was at the Polo Grounds. Ah, forget I was at the Polo Grounds, the last game of the playoffs between the Brooklyns and the Giants. And boy, I, I, I want to tell you, one thing's keep buzzing through my head. 13 and a half games in August. You know, any fellow in Brooklyn can tell you for the next 50 years exactly what happened without worries. But I'll wait you, I can tell you, in any corner for the next 50 years, uh, in any corner, they'll be doing this for 50 years where one fellow must turn to another and say, Gee, uh, I like a man. <laughs> well, I was at the park that day, and for eight and a half innings, nobody lived better than me. <laughs> oh, I had a giant fan sitting next to me. Was I giving it to him? <laughs> oh, oh, for eight and a half innings, I was really giving it to him. Then came the ninth. <laughs> All right, so they scored one run. So the Giants had a man a second and third, big deal. We were in that condition all year long, we've been in that trouble. As a matter of fact, I got the only radio in the whole world that sweats. <laughs> so the fellow who used to be our manager, we hate him so much in Brooklyn. <laughs> we hate him so much in Brooklyn, we don't even put dressing on the salads anymore. <laughs> so he walked in the dugout, out to the mound, he got rid of Newcomb, wait for the bullpen for Branca to come in. Now, I want to tell you the truth. Never before in the history of this world did over 50,000 people know what was going to happen. <laughs> As Branca started to walk to the, to the mound, everybody started yelling, it's going to be a homer, it's going to be a homer, wait, watch it go, it's going to be a homer. Everybody in the ballpark knew it was going to be a homer, except the manager who walked from the dugout out to the mound. <laughs> he was the only guy that didn't know. And I knew what was going to happen, so I got up, I left the park, and I, as I got into the parking lot, I heard a roar go up from the park. I never heard such a roar in my life. I knew what happened. So I got into the car, which is no longer mine, <laughs> and, and I led the parade to the bridge. So I led the parade to the bridge. I jumped. I didn't get hurt. There were so many fellows already on the bottom. <laughs> Of course, I got a big kick out of it to keep saying that the Giants was the miracle team. Miracle team. The miracle team was the Brooklyns. How did they lose it? <laughs> but uh, I want to tell you something about a Brooklyn corner, if I may. And any corner in Brooklyn, especially if you're out of work, and uh, if the fellows in the audience will be honest with me, uh, any of you fellows in the audience ever hang around a corner, incidentally? <laughs> any of you fellows didn't hang around corners? <laughs> any of you fellows? And I used to go to a corner every day. Matter of fact, I used to go to a corner every night. I used to go to the corner day and night. I wouldn't even look for a job. I had no time. And I can remember how my mother would say to me every day, going to the corner again? With those bums? And I would say, Ma! Did you ever do that to your mother? Ma! Gee! You don't understand nothing. Means he's no bum. Beans is going to be a doctor. But my mother knew better. Beans became a bum doctor. <laughs> Remember those days when you had to work, how your mother would come to you in the middle of the night, about 11 in the morning, <laughs> tap you quietly in the head and say, up, darling, up, dear, work you don't care to, but eat you must. <laughs> bum, up! <laughs> I'd jump out of bed and say, I can't find a job, Ma! I got no connections. Besides, I'm only 40. <laughs> Let me sleep five more minutes. 
We used to fight like this every day to five o'clock, at which time my father would come home from work. No matter where I'd be standing, he'd pass me by. It's a funny thing, in most families, when you're out of work, your father doesn't talk to you. He walks into the house, I say, hello, Pa. He says, I can't look at you. <laughs> so I gotta make up with him, he's the bank. I say, Pa, when you were my age, what were you doing? He says, same thing, supporting you. <laughs> then my mother comes over to help me out. She says, why can't you be like other boys and run away from home? You ever borrow money off your mother when you had to work? You had to be in good physical condition because you never knew when the hammer was going to shoot out and give you a belt in the head. <laughs> you say, Ma, could you lend me a quarter? Come on, Ma, Ma, don't hit. Ma, Ma, give me a quarter. Ma, don't hit, Ma. Ma, put the quarter on the table. <laughs> and I had the whole quarter figured out, including a parlay. Four cents I merely spent for Tootsie Rolls. Five cents I used to invest in chocolate soda. Did you ever do that? You drink halfway down, you say to the owner, fill it up, it's too sweet. <laughs> Let's play a little game with each other. Who can remember back to those wonderful days when for a penny, you're able to walk into any candy store in America and buy a long piece of paper with buttons on them? <laughs> Anybody here remember the dish pan with the candy and the spoon was to dig in and dig out? Every time you put it in your mouth, you cut yourself. <laughs> remember the wax bottles? You bite off the top, the whole syrup falls on top of you. <laughs> remember you want to go to a movie, you said to your mother, Ma, I want to go to a movie, Ma. My everybody's gone to the moon. So she gave you five empty bottles? <laughs> you ever go home from school on a Friday? You're about to walk in the house, your mother say one word to you. Out! <laughs> Friday, you remember Friday? She had a lot of paper spread out all over the floor. Just wash the floor, you can't walk in the house. <laughs> so you stand by the door and you say, I live here. I'll walk in any time I want, Ma. And your mother would say, come in. <laughs> now you walk in, she gives you one belt in the head. Bang. She never missed. As she gave you a belt in the head, you did this. What are you hitting? What are you hitting? What are you trying to do, make me stupid? <laughs> Don't hit me, I'll run away. And she made you sandwiches. <laughs> I don't want to upset you, right? thank you. I don't want to upset you right now. I hope I don't get too many people nervous, but I just finished. And I'd like to leave you the same way I found you, stunned. That was hilarious, Phil, darling. You must come back again. Uh, preferably next year when the Giants win again. Thank you, dolls. Uh, now, at this time... Oh, quiet, you. Now, at this time, I would like to... Um, Mary, will you please fire that musician? Okay. You're fired, Benny Goodman. Benny Goodman? I'm sorry, Tallulah. I was just warming up my clarinet. You need a clarinet to warm you up with me on the program. <laughs> Come here, darling. But Tallulah, I came here to play. Oh, well. <laughs> but I'm only a musician. Well, just think of me as a violin, darling. <laughs> Would you like to tuck me under your chin? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to play my clarinet. Oh, I'm doing fine tonight. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is the king, Benny Goodman, playing The Man I Love. Meredith, if you please.
Thank you, Benny Goodman. That was divine, darling. And now let's hear about another kind of show. It's the big show in your neighborhood supermarket, starring famous brand names in the world's biggest and brightest array of fine foods and other packaged goods. And what's brightest about it? Aluminum. Reynolds Aluminum Foil. On shelf after shelf, you'll see the special gleam of richly colored foil labels and packages. The aluminum foil that protects quality reflects quality. Reynolds Aluminum Foil is a solid sheet of metal, impervious to moisture, light, and odors. Keeps cereals and cookies crisp. Keeps butter, margarine, cheese at their best. The scientific protection for dehydrated soups, yeast, dried fruits. See the big show at your grocer's. The brilliant packaging performance by Reynolds. Pioneers of progress through aluminum. We'll be back in just a moment, darlings, with Frankie Lane and the rest of our stars. First, I want to take a moment to ring my chimes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> This is The Big Show, Act Two, and here is Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> there are singers and there are singers. The line between a really great singer and a run-of-the-mill singer is a very thin one indeed. We had planned to have this thin line, Frank Sinatra, on the show, but he was taken ill. He's in the early stages of TV. <laughs> so I called up the life-size Frankie, Frankie Lane. Hello, is that you, Frankie boy? Yeah, this is Frankie. How are you, Bing? <laughs> this is not Bing. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that you, Perry? This is not Perry. Oh, Vaughn. This is not Vaughn. Now, look, darling, why don't you try to Lula? No, thanks. I don't want to stand in line. <laughs> I finally made him understand. And here he is in person, Mr. Frankie Lane. And so we meet again. Well, well, Frankie Lane. Well, well, Fazula Banker. <laughs> uh, speaking of Fazula, how's your uh, Pison uh, Sinatra feeling? Did I cor uh, pronounce that correctly, darling? I don't understand. Pison. Pison, thanks, dear, very much. Uh, did you uh, go over to visit him? Oh, he's going to be all right now. The doctor said he's just ru run down. He's got low water pressure. <laughs> Don't you mean blood pressure? Not Sinatra. <laughs> oh, yes, I know what you mean. And, darling, I want to thank you for filling in for Sinatra. You not only fill in, you slop <laughs> over around the edges. <laughs> I must admit, you're all man. Thank you, Tallulah. And may I return the compliment? <laughs> Isn't he sweet? You know, I wish you wouldn't say these things about Sinatra. He's a buddy boy of mine, you know. Let's cut out these thin jokes. Fifty writers have grown fat writing thin jokes about Frank. If he were here to defend himself, you wouldn't do these jokes. He can look any woman his weight. Yes, uh, but where can you find a woman who weighs 60 pounds? Not only that, but he went down to the blood bank last week. He's a blood donor, you know. I didn't even know he was a blood owner. All right, so he's not fat, but he isn't thin either. He's wiry. <laughs> and suppose he does need a little soldering job now and then. <laughs> well, thank you. Speaking of soldering, darling, how about you and me doing a little spot welding after the show tonight? Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh-huh. Let me knock off a song here first, and then I'm going up to visit Sinatra. How about you coming along and we'll have dinner at his place? Uh, uh, no, thanks, darling. I don't care to be fed intravenously. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with your friend Sinatra is that he doesn't take care of himself. He ought to buy himself a nice little home in the country. Uh-uh. I know these places in the country. They cost a lot of money to run. What with servants and everything. Oh, the servants are no problem, darling. All he'll need are a maid and a buffer. He already has a gardener. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now, why are we wasting time talking about Sinatra? Why don't you come up and visit me? You and I, Frankie. We could make such beautiful music together. Okay. 
I'll sing. You keep quiet. <laughs> All right, if that's the way you want it, sing, Buster. How about an introduction to The Day Isn't Long Enough? Meredith, if you please. The day isn't long enough When I'm with you The day isn't long enough The hours so few There should be more Than just 24 when lips have so much to say Why should the night Offer delight then Hurry away The thrill of your sweet caress Still lingers on Ah, but just when there's happiness The day is all gone I say hello And it's time to go Before our kiss is through The day isn't long enough when I'm with you I say hello And it's time to go before our kiss is through The day isn't long enough When I'm with you Frankie, darling, that was as usual thrilling. Typical Frankie Lane tempo. Not too fast, not too slow, just mediocre. <laughs> and speaking of mediocre, we'd like to introduce now the conductor of our orchestra, who isn't mediocre at all. And he isn't fast, either. He's just plain slow. Meredith Wilson. <laughs> uh, Miss Bankett, I don't want to be a boor, well, nobody wants to be, darling. You just can't help it. Now, what's your problem? Well, sir, Miss Bankhead, uh, Frankie Lane is a very good singer, and I don't think you should have called Frankie Boy singing mediocre. Frankie Boy? Yes. Frankie Boy's a sensitive artist, you know, and well, he's very thin-skinned. Well, he rare... Uh, he wears it rather loose. <laughs> Doesn't he? <laughs> I said I didn't mean to offend Mr. Lane. I'll be glad to apologize to him if I've hurt his feelings. Gee, would you, Miss Bankhead? I'll call him. Uh, Frankie boy. Yeah, Mayor boy. <laughs> Come here, Frankie boy. Miss Bankhead wants to apologize to you. Yeah? What did she do? Uh, she insulted you. She did? I must be on the wrong page. Well, get with it, darling. Well, I'll find it here. I'll find it here someplace now. I'll catch up with you. Let's press on. If I'm not, just start without me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hold you up, but I just, just dashed over here from the Paramount. We're playing five shows a day, and there's three other acts, including Gene Carroll, Les Paul and Mary Ford, Boyd Rayburn's Orchestra, along with the feature picture, The Mob Starring Broad Crawford. The prices change at noon. And I hope everybody comes to the Paramount because I'm in on a percentage deal. Yeah, and I hope you run at the Paramount is as long as your plug, dear. Well, come to think of it, Miss Backhand, I don't think you were very nice to our other guest when he played the clarinet. 
Uh, Benny Boy. Come on over here, Benny Boy. Hi, Mayor Boy. Uh, you know Frankie Boy, don't you, Benny Boy? Sure. Hi, Frankie Boy. Hi, Benny Boy. I'm fine, Frankie Boy. Uh, fellas, remember me to Lula Boy? <laughs> now, what is all this Benny Boy, Frankie Boy? Well, we're all members of the union. Oh, I know, I know. 802. No, no, we belong to 803. It's a splinter group. What's a splinter group? Splinter group. You sit around all day on a wooden bench waiting for a job. You pick up any jobs that way? No, but you pick up a lot of splinters. Wowee! <laughs> well, you see, Miss Bankhead, a splinter group is a group that breaks away from the main group they're affiliated with. Yeah. Now, I know this could never happen, but supposing there was a Perry Como fan club for Frankie Lane. Well, suppose there was. And if there isn't, I might start one. What do you want from me? Well, I want you to apologize like you said you would. Oh, very well. I apologize to all Perry Como fans for Frankie Lane. And I accept your apology. Thank you, Doctor. And to show you there's no hard feelings, I'm going to apologize, too. I want to apologize to all the Betty Davis fans for Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to know that in another hour, this will be last week's show. <laughs> and now, Mayor Boy... If you can uh, disengage yourself from 803 and back into the good graces of 802 and render unto Petrillo that which is Caesar's, how about that exciting arrangement of Lullaby of Broadway? Merit it, if you please. <laughs>
A mere boy? That was simply grand boy. And congratulations to your fiddle section. They were playing like a splinter group. Say, I've been waiting around here sitting on that leather couch so long. I'm probably the first man to ever get a leather splinter. <laughs> you remember me? The fellow had the line that's hot in the oven earlier. Long the, time no see, my darling. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Allen, my favorite. <laughs> I've got, I've got a big surprise for you, you know. There's a very good friend of yours on the show this week. Uh, uh, one of your favorite people. Bert Parks of Stop the Music is on this show? <laughs> no, no, Fred. It's Margaret Truman. Oh, Face the Music. <laughs> Come over here, Margaret. Hello, F.A. Well, hello, M.T. M.T., that's what my pockets have been since last March 15th. <laughs> How are you, Margaret? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. And uh, your mother? Very well, thank you. Let me see. Is there someone else? Oh, oh yes. Your, uh, your father? Is he still in the same business? Uh, yes, and he sends you greetings. You mean I'm drafted? <laughs> oh, now, Fred, look here. We've already been through that war. <laughs> we have? How did we make out? We beat the British. <laughs> well, they certainly got even with us last month. <laughs> when you took the big show over there. What do you mean, you? We? <laughs> Why? What happened, Fred? Well, the critics were rather, shall we say, well, you know how the British are. Stiff upper lip and all that sort of thing. Well, they hit us with it. <laughs> In a pucker, I might <laughs> Lucky we didn't play you bangy, Colony, darling. Ah, uh, you are so right, Tulu. Personally, I don't pay any attention to critics' opinions. Have you ever analyzed a critic's taste? Have you ever seen a critic's wife? Fred, I saw some of the London reviews, and they were very nice. Ah, yes. They gave us the old banana oil, which is about the only kind of oil they have over there these days. They have these old bananas who give this oil by appointment in New York. But, uh, by the way... <laughs> by the way, Margaret, I, I, uh, Margaret, not changing the subject, but I see that Princess Elizabeth, who is another subject, I mean, you see how cleverly... <laughs> the, uh, Margaret, I see that Princess Elizabeth is over here visiting Canada. Oh, yes. She's visiting here with her husband. With her husband. Does uh, that give uh, you any ideas, Margaret? Well, not at the moment, Fred. Well, uh, should you ever entertain such an idea, just remember, her father took him into the business. <laughs> and remember, Margaret, next year is leap year. Have you made any plans for next year? No plans, Fred. Well, like father, like daughter. <laughs> Yes, Paul and Hoffa. <laughs> Portland, darling Portland, do you know Margaret Truman? Oh, sure. Hello, Portland. How do you do, Your Honor? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Truman, you can do me a big favor. I belong to a girls' club, and our treasury has a deficit. So we're giving a smoker. Could you come over and smoke for us? <laughs> Oh, I mean, entertain for us. It's next Saturday night. Oh, I'm sorry, Portland. I couldn't make it Saturday. I'm scheduled to smoke some... I mean, to sing someplace else. I'd like to help you make up that deficit, but I can't. Why don't you ask Fred to entertain for you? Oh, Fred entertained for us last month. And that's how we got the deficit. <laughs> In my defense, Your Honor, I should say that this club of Portland's is an open forum. They sit there with their mouths open. The doors open, the transom was open. I was open the last half of that week, too. Sir. Well, we can change our smoker to another night, Miss Truman. All you have to do is sing one song. Another night, I'll be glad to. How big an orchestra do you have? Well, it's kind of a small club room for an orchestra, Margaret. All we have room for is a piano. Do you know a piano player? No comment. 
<laughs> How about me, Portland? I'd be glad to come and sing for your club. Well, I don't know if we can afford to pay you much money, Miss Bankhead. Oh, I'll do it for nothing, darling. Well, you might be good for nothing. <laughs> but we really had our minds set on Miss Truman. Fred, couldn't you put in a word for me with Miss Truman? Well, I can't even find my congressman. <laughs> He's hiding in Washington. He's afraid to come home. I'll try to get in touch with him. Say, Margaret, if you'll do this for Portland, we'll have a party in your honor after the show. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to a party after the show. Well, couldn't you come to my party, too? Or don't you believe in the two-party system? <laughs> well, I sure do. If I could find another party to sing a duet with me, I'd appear at your little affair. No sooner said than done. Now, let me see. Meredith... How about you? You've never sung on this program. How about you and Margaret trying a duet? Okay, how about uh, something from Gilbert and Sullivan? Say, uh, If We Tarry from Isle no? Gilbert and Sullivan are two nice parties. Margaret, you take the high notes. Meredith, you take the low notes. And the last one to finish is a Republican. <laughs> Up to Terrier, we marry you and I. Of the feeling I inspire, you may die by and by. For peers with flowing coppers press their offers, that is why I am sure we should not tarry ere we marry you and I. If we weak enough to tarry ere we marry you and I, with the more attractive maid and you, a lady, you may fly. If by chance we should be parted, broken hearted, I should die. Oh, I think we will not tarry ere we marry you and I. Oh, oh, if we're weak enough to tarry ere we marry you and I, of the feeling I inspire you may tire by and by. Of the feeling I inspire you may tire by and by. If we're weak enough to tarry ere we marry you and I, of the feeling I inspire you may tire by and by. So I think we will not tarry ere we marry ere we marry you and I, you and I, you and I. Thank you, Jeanette Truman <laughs> and Nelson Wilson. The votes are in and counted, and you win by popular acclaim. Personally, I demand a recount. But we'll be back in a moment with Marlena Dietrich and the rest of our stars, just as soon as I ring my chimes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> This is The Big Show, Act Three, brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that gives you something new, something no other cigarette has. Chesterfield mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And by Anacin, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And here is the star of The Big Show, Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> well, darling, I'm playing this part of the show under protest because I have to introduce now... One of the most divine, glamorous women in the whole wide world. This woman, despite the fact that she's a grandmother, gets more woof whistles than any woman I know. Her appearance anywhere is a cue for all the whistlers to do their stuff. So here she is, Whistler's grandmother, Miss Marlena Dee. <laughs> appreciate it if you didn't keep referring to me as a grandmother. You're overdoing it. Don't speak to me about overdoing it. Speak to your daughter. <laughs> By the way, Tallulah, I had a letter from what was once the beautiful city of Paris before you got there. <laughs> oh, Paris. Oh, what a time I had there, Malena. Uh, did you buy any new gowns? Oh, and what gowns and how expensive. Honestly, Malena, the prices they charge... You for a, just a little snip of a dress. I know. $500 covers nothing. <laughs> what did you pay for the one you're wearing, darling? 250 
That gown you have on intrigues me, Tallulah. Oh, do you like it, darling? Mm -hmm. Just what color is that? Well, it's the new color, you know, a battleship gray. <laughs> battleship gray. That's lovely. Isn't it a little tight around the boiler room? <laughs> and not at all, Marlena. I wore it to a dance last week. A sort of a shakedown cruise. <laughs> I think it fits me perfectly. It's just my size, 12. What size? 12. What size? I told you twice, 12. Oh, twice, 12. That's more your size. <laughs> Marlena, I'm going to make a statement, and I want you to answer true or false. Will you do that? Of course. Well, here's the statement. That figure you have is not all yours. Hmm? False. That's just what I thought. <laughs> Now, don't make any more cracks about my gown. I paid a pretty penny for it. My goodness, that was a clearance sale. <laughs> what are you talking about? You should see the prices they soak you for dresses over there. I was soaked in every shop in Paris. <laughs> yes, I heard you were soaked in Paris. <laughs> uh, Marlena, darling, please, dear, now let's drop this nonsense. We're too close to go on like this. One of us will only get bruised, and with the cast we've got this week, I'm already cut up and bleeding. Now tell me, Marlena, whatever happened to that, oh, you remember, darling, that divine chap you used to go out with, uh, uh, Jeffrey? Oh, we split up. Really, darling? For good? No, only temporarily. He got married. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, they do have a habit of doing that. But look, Marlena, we might as well face it. This is just between us, you know. Nobody's listening. And don't you find the man problem gets a little tougher every year? You're so right, Cholula. I wouldn't admit this to anyone else. But one day last week, I had lunch alone. No. <laughs> Well, if you think that's something, as long as you opened up to me, I'll tell you something. One day, about a month ago, I had breakfast alone. <laughs> oh, no, that's a shame. <laughs> that is really a shame. Men seem to be disappearing. In a few years, they'll be extinct. Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't say that, Tulula. They're probably all hiding out in the back room somewhere. And personally, I'm going to see what the boys in the back room will have. <laughs> now, I think that's a sneaky thing to do. For three minutes, we've been standing here talking, and she hasn't been interested in the thing I've said. All she wanted to do was work her way into a music queue. All right, Meredith, see what the boys in the back room will have, if you please. <laughs> Oh, come along, boys, and listen to my tale of the lady buckaroo on the old black trail. Come a tie, I yippee yippee yay, yippee yay. Come a tie, I yippee yippee yay. This lady buckaroo could rope and ride, and on payday you could hear her far and behind. Oh, see what the boys in the back room will have And tell them I'm having the same Go see what the boys in the back room will have And give them the poison they name And when I die, don't spend my money On flowers in my picture in a frame Just see what the boys in the back room will have and tell them I sigh And tell them I cry And tell them I died of the same And when I die, and when I die Don't buy a casket Don't buy a casket Of silver with the candles on a flame All the way Just see what the moon's in the background and tell them I sighed. We'll tell them you sighed. And tell them I cried. We'll tell them you cried. And tell them I died of the same. See what the boys in the back room will have. And tell them I'm having the same. Just see what the boys in the back room will have. And give them the poison they name. And when I die. And when I die, don't be. 
preacher. I'm the preacher. For speaking Ooh. of my glory and my fame. And my Just see what the boys in the rock And tell them my sight. We'll tell them you sight. And tell them I cry. We'll tell them you cry. And tell them I died of the same. Pick him up, partner. I shoot for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my darling Milena. Now, that room wasn't back quite far enough. <laughs> now, here's Fred Allen, who looks as though he's got something on his mind. Yes, Tallulah. I suggest, without any further ado, we all sound off for Chesterfield. Sound off! Sound off! Sound off for Chesterfield! Chesterfield has something new no other brand can offer you. Mildness plus no aftertaste, no unpleasant aftertaste. Sound off for Chesterfield! Sound off for Chesterfield! Milder, 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 Chesterfield. That's right. From Maine to California, smokers are changing every day. All over America, there's a swing to Chesterfield with this great new thing. Mildness plus. No aftertaste. Mildness plus. No aftertaste. No unpleasant aftertaste in Chesterfield. That's right. Science discovered what you can prove. You better get into the smoking groove. For Chesterfield now sets the pace with no unpleasant aftertaste. So here's what we want you to do. Right now. Yes, here's what we want you to do. Right now. Sound off. For Chesterfield. Sound off. For Chesterfield. Try a pack of Chesterfields. Do it. Today. That's good advice, friends. Sound off for Chesterfield. Try a pack today. A long time ago, oh, about an hour ago, uh, three young girls appeared on this show. Now, an hour older and probably not much wiser, we're going to give them a chance to make a comeback. Here are the Andrew sisters, accompanied by Meredith Wilson's orchestra, singing, Love is such a cheat. Meredith, darling, if you please. <laughs> Gypsy coming from the marketplace ran right into a pretty face, and you know what that means. Lots of money in his jeans, the girl just in her teens. The scene is Transylvania, where love is such a mania. The gypsy came from Bucharest, the girl she came from Budapest. Now you can guess the rest. So the wine began to flow, and so did all his go. They danced a little, drank a little, danced a little. Like a little gypsy played his violin She sang to him her song And sent her head upon his chest Bright and early dawn Found the girly gone Leaving tipsy gypsy wondering why Love is such a cheat Love that should be sweet Leaves and never even says goodbye Certain when you're flirting, you will always come to grief. Doctor, lawyer, tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, beggar, man, or thief. If there's a heart within you, you continue ever to be crossed. If there is a miss to kiss. You kiss the miss and ever you be lost. Love was ever thus, so why all the fuss? Gentlemen and lady, dry your tears. Though your hearts may ache, young hearts never break. You love and you are fooled through all the years. And it's the same in Oklahoma, in Tahiti or Tacoma, where the ladies are concerned. Here's a lesson to be learned, your fingers will be burned They'll sing for you and play for you and turn night into day for you They get you feeling in the pink with every glass of wine you drink Till you forget to think 
And the first thing that you know, you're looking for your dough. You're looking for the lady too who didn't say goodbye to you. The wine goes in, the truth comes out. You wonder what it's all about, and boy, do you feel blue. So don't try to be sweet to every girl you meet, or you discover love is such a cheat. Oh, what a soft job those girls have. Sing a couple of songs and they go home. And you can't even tell if all three are singing. One of them could be standing there just moving her lips. Why don't I make up a group like that? I'll get another girl and form a trio. Oh, Malena, how about you? Uh, do you want to be part of a trio, darling? Well, I've never been part of a trio. I've been part of a triangle. <laughs> Is this the same thing? Uh, well, almost the same. There's harmony in a trio. Oh, you haven't met Marlena, have you, Margaret? Oh, I beg your pardon, darling. I skipped your line. Read oh, it now, will you? Could I join this trio, kids? Kids, I said. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth it. Have you met Marlena, Margaret? Margaret, have you met Marlena? How do you do, Miss Truman? Oh, this is a pleasure meeting you. You've always been one of my most favorite people, Miss Garbo. Now, just a minute. <laughs> enough is enough. Well, what I'm trying to say, Miss Garbo, is there's only one woman more glamorous than you are, and that's Marlena Dietrich. Ha, 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 ha. Isn't she sweet? <laughs> no, isn't she diplomatic? <laughs> If she doesn't include me in that glamorous group, she's going to be a diplomatic corpse. <laughs> oh, you know what I think of you, Tallulah. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> now, if we're going to be a trio, somebody has to be a leader. Oh, it doesn't matter who's leader. All we have to do is start singing and see how it sounds. Now, suppose I sing the melody and you two sing the harmony. Uh, which one of you will sing bass? Well, I will, of course. <laughs> Oh, I thought I would sing bass. Uh, no, Marlena, I'll sing bass. <laughs> You'd better give up, Tallulah. I will never give up. <laughs> better give up, Tallulah, you're turning blue. I will not give up. I'm lower than you are. You said it, Tallulah. I didn't. <laughs> Now, look here, I'll settle this. We're going to show these Andrew girls how to sing Love is Such a Cheat. Meredith, get your orchestra ready, kid. <laughs> well, uh, they're ready for almost anything, but not this. <laughs> Are you sure you want to go through with this, Miss Bankhead? This could set music back 25 years. <laughs> we may have to go through that whole Rudy Valley period again. <laughs> And some music, please. Okay, okay. <laughs> Men, this is it. <laughs> now, I can't order you to do this. I ask for volunteers. <laughs> Those who have families need not apply. <laughs> Meredith, we are waiting. All right, men. We've played together for many years. Now it's every man for himself. <laughs> are you ready, girls? Here we go. And that's the reason love is such a cheat. Oh, no, that isn't uh, Miss Bankhead. Saw uh, to you. I don't. <laughs> I don't think that gypsy will ever get to the marketplace that way. Uh, let's try it without the music. Now, all together, girls, the hard way in tempo. One and two. A gypsy, gypsy coming, coming from, from the marketplace, right into a pretty face, that's and the that's the reason. That's the reason. What's wrong with the trio? Uh, Miss Truman. What am I doing that's wrong? You're singing it right. <laughs> now, if you ladies would just follow me, I'm sure we can do this. Would you please watch me? One and the two. And, and the three and the four. four. And... <laughs> can I help out, Mayor Boy? Oh, sure you can, Benny Boy. You know everybody? I haven't met Mr. Goodman yet. Oh, Benny, darling, this is Margaret Truman. How do you do? Hello, Margaret. 
I know your father. <laughs> We're members of the same union. <laughs> How does it feel to have a father who is a great man? Why, Benny, everybody's father is a great man. Margaret, every man is a great man. <laughs> But every great man isn't a good man. It's a good joke, eh, Benny boy? Goodman. Uh, <laughs> Meredith, come on with the trio. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait just a minute, uh, Miss Bankett. I got a better idea for a trio. How about Benny Goodman, his clarinet, and the orchestra doing dizzy fingers? Okay, Meredith. <laughs> Every day you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's Anacin, A-N-A-C-I-N. Now the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anacin contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anacin tablets from their own dentist or physician and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at any drug counter. <laughs> Throughout the ages, the poets have been outdoing each other and saying the nicest things about sleep and its healing qualities. But Dorothy Parker has a slightly different viewpoint expressed in her famous narration titled, The Little Hours. No! Oh. Oh. What's this? Oh, what the object of all this darkness all over me. I seem to be in bed. In bed while it's dark out? Me? In bed with no sunshine? They haven't gone in bed me alive on my back was turned, have they? Oh, they wouldn't do a thing like that. No, no, no. I know what it is. I'm awake. <laughs> That's it. I've waked up in the middle of the night. Well, isn't that nice? 4 a.m. sharp. And here's baby, wide-eyed as a marigold. Look at this, will you? 
at the time when all decent people are just going to bed, I wake up. You want to know what got me into this mess? Going to bed at 10 o'clock, that's what. Early to bed, and you wish you were dead. Bed before 11, nuts before 7. I can't believe it. I went to bed at 10 o'clock after a quiet evening of reading. Ah, reading. There's an institution for you. Well, I should have known better. All the best minds have been off reading for years. I wish I'd never learned to read. I wish I'd never learned to take my clothes off. And I wouldn't have been caught in this jam. What was that thing I read? Oh, yes, yes. Bala Rothko. He said something about friends. I remember now. Yes, I remember. He said, there is always something a little pleasing to us in the misfortunes of even our dearest friends. Dearest friends. Well, sweet lot of dearest friends I've got. All of them just settling into their swinish stupors while I'm practically up and about. Dearest friends. The first thing I've got to do is get out and whip me up a complete new set of dearest friends. But will somebody please tell me how? How can I ever meet up with any new people when I'm the only living being awake while the rest of the world I sleep in? Oh, I must try to get back to sleep right now. But how, how? You really can't be expected to drop everything and start counting sheep at my age. On tender, it may be in me, but all my life I have hated sheep. It amounts to a phobia the way I hate them. I can tell the minute there's one in the room. <laughs> they needn't think that I'm going to lie here in the dark and count their unpleasant little faces for them. Well, maybe there's something else I could count. Now, let's see. No, 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 no. I already know by heart how many fingers I have. Well, I could count the things I didn't do yesterday that I should have done. I could count the things I should do today that I know I'm not going to do. I think I'm going to look by daylight if this keeps up. Oh, brother. I'll be a seamy sight for all those rested, clear-eyed, fresh-faced, dearest friends of mine. Rats. It isn't right to have this happen to a person just because she went to bed at 10 o'clock once in her life. Honest, I won't do it ever again. I promise never to go to bed again. If I can only sleep now. Oh, how do people go to sleep? Well, I might try busting myself smartly over the temple with a light lamp. I might even try reciting some of those delightful quotes I picked up last night when I was improving my mind. Mrs. Porter and her daughter washed their feet in soda water. <laughs> well, it's too bad I haven't got a maid. I could send her out to do some shopping at an all-night rope store, then I could hang myself. <coughs> oh, I give up. I surrender, dear. No sleep. I know when I'm lit. Oh, I'm going to turn on the light. Take a book and read my head off. Oh, maybe I should throw the book and knock his head off. Maybe I could lure him in here with a saucer of milk and barbecue him under my sun lamp. <laughs> sun lamp? Why didn't I think of that before? Well, now there's a real stroke of genius. Ah, oh, what a nice, bright room. Just like noon. Now I can sleep. Ah, this is more like it. Bravo, Tallulah. No, oh, thank you, Fred. I, uh, I enjoyed that very much. I can see now why you couldn't sleep. You never stopped talking. <laughs> well, why should I, darling? There's nothing else that's interesting. Well, to you, of course. But you're the only... <laughs> you're the only woman I know who can make a room nervous. What do you mean by that? Well, conjure up, if you will, Tallulah, what the various inanimate objects in your room are thinking and saying. You know, while you were doing that sketch, I recruited the members of the cast to assist me in a tour of your room. May I show you how our 
tour turned out, Tallulah? Well, if you don't, darling, we'll be three minutes short and I'll have to sing. Now, no threats, please. <laughs> Meredith, some mood music, if you please. Professor. Here we are in Tallulah Bankhead's bedroom. We know it's Tallulah's bedroom because folded over a chair are her zoot slacks. Baggy from a hard day on the job. Everybody in town is asleep except Tallulah. The stores are shut up. The offices are shut up. Even Tallulah has shut up. <laughs> it is 4 a.m. We can tell by the clock that stands on her night table. Tick, tock, tick, tock. How do you do? You are the clock here? Yes, I used to be a cuckoo clock, but I went to an analyst. Oh, and now you're just cuckoo. Well, now the problem is, why can't Tallulah sleep? That's easy. She keeps trying to turn me back all the time. Well, who doesn't? As we look around the room, our eyes stop on a portrait. The portrait speaks. I am a picture of Tallulah. I am cockeyed. I mean, I'm hanging cockeye. Oh, well, thank you, picture. As we tiptoe around the room, we hear Tallulah's bathtub. Drop, drop, drip, drop, drop, drip. Two drops and a drip. <coughs> That's peculiar. Tallulah's bathtub has three faucets. I'm hot. I'm cold. I'm gin. <laughs> No wonder Tallulah can't sleep. The bathtub is cockeyed, too. At this moment, our eye chances to fall upon a tray. Something on the tray, on the table, speaks to us. I'm a sandwich. You're a sandwich and you can talk? Sure, I'm a tongue sandwich. <laughs> that tongue doesn't sound kosher to me. As we go by the window, perched on the windowsill is a cat. Meow, I'm a cat. Well, what do you know? A glamour puss. <laughs> Coming, Tom. <laughs> Where are you going, Kitty? I've got to see what the boys in the back room are having. <laughs> Say, here's a phonograph, and on the phonograph is a record. I am a phonograph record. She's always making me sing. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. Rector, tell me, why do you keep repeating that? I don't know. I'm cracked, I guess. <laughs> Just a Washington merry-go-round. <laughs> well, that takes care of the inanimate objects. Now we come to this little twisted lump of misery lying here on the bed. <laughs> Are you asleep, Tallulah? Of course I'm not asleep. I'm too nervous to sleep. Well, I hesitate to advise this, but as a last resort, you must do this. I've tried this on my friends, and it works every time. Here, take this. What's that, a prescription? No, it's a ticket to the big show. If that doesn't put you to sleep, nothing else will. <laughs> Well, that's it, darlings. That's our show for this week. Next week, we have another great cast of entertainers for you, including Jack Carson, Jimmy Durante, The Ink Spots, James Mason and his charming wife, Pamela, Dorothy Sarnoff, Herb Schreiner, and others, and, of course, our very own Meredith Wilson and the Big Show Orchestra and Chorus. Until then, may the good Lord bless and keep you, whether near or far away, Malena. You find that long-awaited golden day today. May your troubles all be small ones and your fortune ten times ten, Fred. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again, Portland. May you walk with sunlight shining and the bluebird in every tree and your sisters may there be a silver lining back of every cloud you see Bill? fill your dreams with sweet tomorrow never mind what might have been meredith may the good lord bless and keep you till we meet 
again. Frank? May you long recall each rainbow, then you'll soon forget the rain. Margaret? May the warm and tender memory be the one that will remain. Fill your dreams with sweet tomorrow. Never mind what might have been. May the good Lord bless and keep you until we meet again. This portion of the big show is brought to you by Chesterfield, which brings you the greatest lineup of talent in radio and television history. And by Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Here, Phil Harris and Alice Faye next on NBC.